Hi, my name is Valentine Adwaka, and I am a member of the Cyber Infrastructure Architecture team. And I welcome you to the Introduction to Git course. As part of the objectives for this course, we're going to take a look at a brief introduction, and then we'll talk about what Git is. Next, we're going to look at installing Git, getting started with Git, and we'll do a hands-on. For this section, we'll try to understand what a version control system is, and then we'll look at several types of version control systems and what Git is. So what is a version control system? Now, a version control system is a software tool that helps a software team manage changes to source code over time. A version control software keeps track of every modification to the code in a special kind of database. That is to say, if a mistake is made, developers can turn back the clock and compare earlier versions of the code to help fix the mistake while minimizing disruption to all team members. Another type of version control system is a centralized VCS. This type of version control system is way better than the local VCS. For example, everyone knows to a certain degree what everyone else on the project is doing. Administrators here have fine-grained control over who can do what, and it's far easier to administer a central version control system than it is to deal with local databases on every client. Although this is good, it still has its own downside because it has a single point of failure. That means if this server goes down for one hour, then during that hour, nobody can collaborate or save any version of code or anything. Finally, we have the distributed version control system. Now this is what we currently use and examples of this kind of system is Git, Bitbucket, and so on. This type of version control system mirrors the repository, including its full history. So if any server dies and these systems were collaborating via that server, any of the client repositories can be copied back up to the server to restore it. Every clone is really a full backup of all the data. So with this kind of system, we don't need to worry because everyone who has downloaded files from this main server has a copy of all the files. And whenever this server dies and comes back up, we can re-upload our files to the same server and continue work like nothing happened. So what is Git? Git is a distributed version control system. It is a de facto standard. It is the most broadly adopted tool of its kind. Currently, we have a vast number of developers that are using Git and a significant proportion of college students who may have you know, experience with just Git. Git offers performance, security, and flexibility with functionalities such as branching, merging, and creating smaller or larger projects. So why would you want to use Git? Well, Git is functional for developers for collaboration and maintenance of code. In marketing, there are several files you'd like to share, um, maybe proposals, flyers, and you want to work collaboratively with your team. Marketers can also use, use that as well. And same thing applies for product management, designers, customer support, and human resource. So how do we get Git installed? Depending on the platform you're currently using, this is for CentOS Linux users. And if you're running on Ubuntu, you could use this command to install Git. And if you have a Mac or Windows, you could just click on either of these links to download Git. So when you're done downloading and installing Git, the next thing you want to do is to set up your identity with this command right here. So here you set up your name and your email address, and this ensures that every changes you make in a file appends your name to it so that people can know who affected a given change at a given time. 
You could also set up your default text editor so that whenever you want to commit a message to a code, Git is going to use that editor by default. So for Linux users, this is the command you use to modify your text editor. And for Windows users, you want to use this command to modify your text editor. So when you're done with the configuration and you just want to check the detail about the configuration you just did, you could use the git config list to check the settings. And then you could also use the git help to check for different commands that git offers. So let's take a look at a quick example. So on my text editor, I already have git installed. And in order to check my settings, I'm going to use the command git config. This. Now, this shows my email and my email, my, my username. Now that we are done setting up our configuration, next, let us set up a Git repository. So I'm going to open up my text editor and then I'll launch my terminal. Expand it. Okay. CD. So currently I'm in my home directory and over here, I'm just going to create a new directory and call it my project. I'm going to CD into my project. Next, I'm going to use the git init command to set up my git repository. So basically, what just happened is that the git init command initialized my project directory with all necessary files that git requires to make my code manageable. So if I do an ls la, this is the git file that was created, but it is quite hidden from users and you don't want to mess with this directory. So I'm going to clear up my console and then we're going to the next slide. Now let's take a look at how you could clone an existing repository. So let's say you're part of a team and you like to download the code and contribute to the code. In order to do this, you would use the git clone command and then followed by the URL to the path of that repository. For example, on my web browser, if I go to my git repository, So let's say I want to download this repository. Now, all I need to do is to go to this place, copy this link, and then I'll go to my code editor and I'll type the command git clone and I'll paste the URL. And now if I type the ls command, you would see that we've been able to download a copy of the repository. Now, if I go into this repository and do an ls, I'll set a list of files and I can start contributing to this repository. So we have three most important states in Git. We have the modified, the staged, and the committed. Now, the modified state means that you have changed the file but have not committed it yet to your database. And then the staged state means that you have marked a modified file in its current version to go into your next commit snapshot. And finally, the committed state means that the data is safely stored in your local database. And we're going to see an example of how we could implement all these. In this section, we're going to do a hands-on. We'll create a file and add a file. We're going to stage a modified file. We'll check the unstaged and staged changes, commit and amend changes, remove and restore a file, view committed history, work with remote, tagging, branching, and merging. So in this section, we're going to create and add a new file. So first, 
we're going to create a new file and then we'll add the file to stage so Git can start tracking our file. And then this is going to be the content of our file, which is a simple Python script. So I'm going to switch to my code editor and then I'm going to create a new file, vi hello.py. And from the slide, I'm going to copy the content of the code and paste it right here. Just a quick cleanup. All right, so now I'm going to save this file. And then if I run the git status command, it tells us that we have on track files. And this is one of the on track files because we haven't added it to the staged area. So currently, Git isn't tracking this file. So in order to add it, we'll use the git add hello.py. And now if I run git status, now we can see that this file has been staged and it's ready to be committed. In this section, we're gonna stage a modified file. So basically we're gonna modify our hello.py program by changing the value of the variable. And then we'll check the status of the file. And if it's not staged, all we need to do is to add it in order to stage it. So I'm gonna switch back to my code editor. And then I'll modify the file, hello.py. I'm gonna change the value of the variable two to seven, and I'm gonna save it. So now if I run the git status command, now it tells me that changes not staged for commit. In other words, I need to add this in order to stage the file. So next I'm gonna do git add hello.py. Now, if I check my git status, it says, okay, these this is a change that is yet to be committed. So just a quick example, just to make sure that you understand what's going on. Um, we're gonna check on stage and stage changes, and this is an assignment for you. So all I need you to do is to create a file called readme in your project directory. Then in that file, you're gonna add the line, simple Python script and save it. Then you can track the file with git add. Next, you should modify the file by adding your name to the file and then you could use the gif and then you could use the git command git difference to check the difference between the modified file and the initial file so after you've you know staged your files and you've done all necessary modifications to that file the next thing you want to do is to commit your changes so when you type the git commit it launches a code editor that prompts for a commit message. So the commit message is more like um, a message that helps identify whatever actions you carried out on a given on a particular stage in a project. So there are other commit options you could use with the git commit command. For example, the git commit hyphen a is a command that that automatically stage files that have been modified and deleted, but new files you have not told Git about are not affected. You could also use the git commit m and then your message, which, um, which actually, you know, helps you to, you know, write your commit message on the fly without launching the code editor. And then you could use the a command and the, um, the m command in one line. You can also use the git commit help command to see a list of all other options you could use together with the git commit command. So how do we remove files in git? Uh, so let's say you'd like to remove your readme file. Um, you would have to use the command git rn and then the name of the file. And after that, on your next commit, you have to specify you know, what actions you actually carried out. So for instance, here we said we removed 
the read readme file. And after this commit, the file is just gonna go away. And also in order to revert like a removed um, file, you could always use the git revert head command to, to you know, roll back the, the previous changes. Now, sometimes um, based on the fact that we have, you know, kept track of the several changes we've made so far in our project, you know, by having hundreds of commit messages. And then you realize that, you know, there's a bug in your code and you would like to roll back to a previous commit. So this is where you check, um, you check the history, the commit history. And in order to do that, you would use the git log command, which gives you a list of all the commits you've done so far in that project. Now, each of these commit messages are actually hashed. So in order for you to revert back to a given commit message, you'd, you'd have to use the git revert um, and then the commit um, ash in order to revert back to your, to, um, your a previous state. So the git log um, gives us information about all the commit messages we've had in the entirety of the project. So let me give a quick example. Um, I'm gonna to switch to my code editor and then I'm gonna go into a project that I worked on with a team member. So CD code gen. Clear my console. Now, in order to see the full, um, the full history of the commits we've made on this project so far, I'm simply gonna use the git log command. And then it shows me the list of all um, the commits we've done so far in this project. So for example, here you could see that as an author, I made a commit at this date and the commit I made um, was I added a gift demo. So basically it shows the most recent commits um, you've, you've carried out on the project. Now we could also use We could also use the git um, the git log pretty format to format how you would like you know your commit uh, messages to be logged to the console. So basically, this option adds a nice little ASCII graph, you know, showing showing your branch and your merge history. So if I run that, here you can see um, the different logs. You know, it shows me um, the commit messages on one line, and then the merges I carried out, the updates, the pull requests, and all all that. So, in order to collaborate, we need to know how to manage our remote repositories. In this section, we're going to upload our local project to um, a remote um, repository. But first, we'll need to log into our GitHub account and then create a new repository. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to my web browser. And then I'm gonna to browse to my repository. You know, and next I'm gonna create a new repository and I'm gonna call it my project. Next, I'll give a description, just a test, and just create a repository. So now that we've created our repository, next, we're gonna carry out this steps right here. So remember, at first, we already initialized our project to let Git know that um, we're gonna work with Git. And then we, we can choose to add this or not, but next we need to commit, you know, our, our first message to our project, and then we'll add our local project to the remote directory using this URL here. So now that we've created our repository, it is time to push our local project to the remote server. And in order to do that, we use the, rem the git remote add command, which takes two arguments, the name of the remote repository and the path 
to the um, remote repository. This is actually a custom name, so it could be anything other than origin. And after that, we need to push our local project to the remote server with the git push command. So we use a git push and then the name of our repository, and then we push it to the master branch, which is um, the name on the remote repository. So I'm going to switch to my code editor. So currently I'm in my project directory and if I do a git status, it tells you that I am on the branch master. So next thing I want to do is to add my remote repository. So origin, and then the path to my remote repository. So I'm going to copy this code right here and go back to my code editor, paste it, and then it's added. So next thing I want to do is to use the git push command. So I'm going to run git push origin master. Okay, let me just make sure I have the right command. So I'm going to use the git push this command right here. Switch back. I'm oh, sorry, I need to add a U. All right, so it requests for my username and password. So I'm going to do that. Password. Next, it tries to upload um, my local project to the remote server, and now it's done. So we can go to the remote server to verify it. So I'm going to click on this to do a refresh. And here we can see our hello.py file, which was committed um, six minutes ago. There you go. So that's how you upload your local project to your remote repository. And then other team members can have access to your code and review it if they want to or download it if they need to add any other additional code to it. So what about in cases where we want to download newly added or modified files? So let's say, for example, um, a team member has you know, modified the files or modified a code, and we need to you know, get the same copy and keep working on it. In that case, um, we can use the git fetch origin. So basically this command right here is just gonna retrieve the latest metadata info, so it wouldn't download the files, like copy of the files, if there are any modified files. However, if you use the git pull origin, this would actually download whatever modified files. You know, it's just going to download a copy of it to your repository, and then you can merge it. So basically, it's always good to use the git fetch origin just to ensure and check if you know there is any modified information before you finally pull um, the, the, the repository to your local repository. So just to see a, a brief example, um, I'm gonna use a git fetch command, git fetch origin. So it actually gave me no result because you know the code hasn't been modified since I uploaded it. And then if I run the git pool origin, it says it's up to date um, with what I currently have. So it does a comparison to see if there's no any change uh, before it downloads it to your local repository. All right, so we can, we can also show um, remote um, repositories and also rename remote repositories. And in order to show the remotes you have, you could use the git remote command, git remote v. And also you could rename your remote repositories maybe from origin to something more you know, customized. And also you could remove um, your remote repositories if you um, don't have any need for it anymore. Or maybe um, the URL path to your remote repository has changed and you'd like to get that modified. So in that case, you'd want to remove the existing um, 
remote repository you have, and then you know just change the name. So just to give an example of how that works, I'm going to run the git remote. And it tells me, okay, this is the, um, this is currently the remote um, repository I have, which is called origin. And if I add the v command, you know, it it tells me the full URL to um, those uh, remote to the remote um, name I have locally. So let's try to remote, um, let's try to rename the um, remote repository I have to something else. So I'm gonna use a command git remote, rename origin to, oh, sorry, to um, Valentine code base. Okay, so if I use the git, remote v so the origin has been renamed to valentine code base and if i need to remove this i'll do it git remote remove valentine code base but i just wouldn't remove it now because we're still working in it all right so let's talk about tagging. Um, so typically, developers use this functionality to, you know, mark release points. You know, so um, you could have several versions of softwares like version 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. And in order to tag like release points, we use the, the tagging functionality that Git provides. So. In order to create a tag, we use the git tag command. And this basically means the iPhone A means that we, we, we're gonna add, like this tag is annotated. So we're gonna add a message to it. And then you have the version number and then the message for that tag. You could also list several tags by using the git tag command without any com, um, option. And here you could delete your tags by specifying um, the version you would like to delete by passing a D flag. You can also show information about a tag. So this is a this this actually shows you um, the the details or the message about a given tag. So with that, you use the git show command, and then you could push um, tags to your repository by using the git push origin and then the version name for that um, repository. So let's let's look at an example. All right, so let's. So right now I'm going to add a tag to this um, code. Oh, git tag annotate um, version 1.0, and then I'm going to add a message to say initial code release. Okay, and I'm going to hit the enter button. In order to view the tags that I have, I'm going to use the git tag command. And there you can see so far we have version 1.0. And then if I want to show any information about a given tag, I can use the beach, um, git show version 1.0. And there you go, I can see um, the tag information about this code and you know the commit message and also um, the code, the content of the code that I just uh, committed and tagged. So let's try to see if I can upload this to my remote repository. So I'm gonna do a git push origin and then a tag name point zero. Oh, so I deleted my repository. So let me add um, that repository real quick. Git remote add origin. And then I have https. I can remember. Yeah. Uh, um, slash. 
That's my project. That's good. Okay, so that's it. All right. So I'm going to run that code again. And there you go. It prompts for my username and then my password. Okay. So now um, we have our new tag uploaded. And if I switch back to my repository and do a refresh, all right, so now it says one release so far. And if I click on this release, it shows us, hey, that we have um, a version one code here. And if I expand this, I'm gonna see um, the message we you know, attached to this tag. And there you have options of downloading um, this version of code to your um, computer if you'd like to use it. So basically that's how tags work. Now let's talk about branching. Now branching is a way of stepping out of the main, um, the main repository, you know, and creating your own, you know, kind of um, repository, you know, like a local, like a local space where you would like to work on in order not to, you know, tamper with the main um, files in the main repository. So basically what I'm saying is, um, just to give an example. So let's say um, we are working on a project and and um, each of us have you know copies of the same project we're working on and now i would like to fix a bug that i realized in the project so in order to do this i'm going to branch out from the main you know project file and the reason why i'm doing this is because um because i'm trying to modify several several codes i wouldn't want to you know tamper with whatever exists in the main code so I'm going to branch out of, of the main file, of the main project, you know, do whatever modifications I need to do. And then later on, um, I'll do a pull request, like I'll seek everyone's um, approval. And if they approve it, then I can merge my branch, you know, or whatever fix I had to the main um, code base. So in that way, we just ensure that everything is clean and we don't have, you know, things jumbled up. So basically, you know, the whole idea of branching is to branch out of the main development and continue working without jumbling, you know, the main branch. So as you can see, over here, I created a, a branch called bug fix. So the way this works is, you know, given the, the flow chart of how Git, you know, would represent this. So let's say this is our initial code base, right? And then I created a branch. Now, when you create a branch, it expands to this point. So this is the branch we created. But meanwhile, here, the asterisk, the asterisk symbol is on the master branch. So this means that I am currently in the master branch, but the bug fix branch was created. But in order to go into the bug fix branch, then I would have to use um, the git checkout command, this one right here, which checks me out into the bug fix branch. So now we can see that the asterisk is on the bug fix. So whatever I do from this point would only affect the bug fix branch without affecting the master branch. And we'll take a look at an example right now. So I'm gonna to switch to my code base, clear up my console, and then do a git status just to check um, you know, what's currently going on. So my, my, my branch is clean. So right now I'm gonna create a branch called bug fix. So git branch bug fix, right? And if I do a git status, now it tells you I'm still on branch master. So what if I do a git branch it lists all the branches I've created so far. So here you can see the asterisk is pointing on master, the master branch. So this means that I'm currently in the master branch. Now, in order to go into the bug fix branch, I would have to use the git checkout command. Okay. So it says switched to branch um, bug fix. 
And if I do a git status, oh, well, let me do a great git branch. Okay, now the asterisk points on the bug fix. So whatever I do from this point wouldn't affect the master branch. So which is a clean way of ensuring that, you know, we don't jumble things up in the project. So right now, I'm just gonna go ahead to edit my file. And then I'll modify this to, um, let's say 10. And after that, I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna run a git diff. So basically what this code does is it does a comparison and checks to see, it compares the previous um, commit to the most recent um, change you did. So here you could see that a plus sign is on the point on the recent change that I, um, on, on the recent modification that I did. And then this was the previous value. So it tells you that this is the, this is, a, this is, this is what I changed recently. So next thing we want to do is I'm going to commit that. Under a new value. Right, so now it says I never staged this for commit. So I'm going to stage my file. I'm doing hello.p, get add hello.py. And then next I'm going to run the commit message. And there you go. This message has been committed. And if I do um, a git status, it says, okay, I'm still on branch bug fix, but nothing to be committed yet, right? So let me switch to the master branch. Git checkout master. Okay. Now if I do an ls and view the information of the hello.py, now it still says the variable one is equal to two. So now we can see that the changes I affected in my bulk phase branch never affected the changes on the master branch. So that's the idea behind, you know, creating branches. So now that we've been able to branch out to do whatever, you know, modifications we intend to do, like how do we combine our modifications to the main branch just to ensure that, you know, everything is in sync. Now we use the merge command to do that. So basically, um, just like the previous example I gave, um, whenever you, so let's say we are in the, we are in the, in the bug fix branch and you know, we did our necessary modifications. And then after that, we committed the, the modification. And next thing you want to do is to switch to the master branch after that. Um, if there's any necessary config, um, modification you need to do, you could also commit that as well. But at the end of the day, this is how the flowchart is going to look. So currently, um, we are in the master branch. But before that, we did our necessary modifications here. And then later, on, we checked out into the master branch, which is a C tree, right? But, however, what we intend doing is to make sure that the C2 and the C3 are merged so we can continue, you know, our flow, which means that, you know, all files has been synced and there is no, you know, code break in, in, in the program. So while in the, in, the, in the master branch, we've used the git merge bug fix to merge the bug fix branch and our current master branch into one. So at this point, anyone who downloads a copy of our program would point to the C4 because C4 has, you know, the modifications from the bug fix and the master branch. So just to give an example of how that works, I'm going to switch back to my code, clear up my console, do a git status. Sorry, git status, just to see where I'm at. So I'm currently in the master branch. And if I do a cat um, hello.py, this shows that, you know, 
there's no modification here. So how do I match the modification, you know, from the bug fix branch to the um, master branch? In order to do that, I'll use the git merge bug fix. Okay, enter, and then it says, okay, one file changed, one in session, and um, one deletion. So if I do a git status, now um, everything has been matched and ready to be pushed to the local, um, to the local repos to the remote repository. So in order to push my code to the um, remote repository, I'm going to do the git push. Um, we change the name to Valentine code base and then master. Okay. Ask for username, password. Oh, there you go. So now we've successfully pushed our modification to the remote repository. So right now I'm going to switch to web and then go to my projects to see if the modification really applied. So there we have um, the new variable that we just committed. So next, I'm going to encourage you to practice the branching and merging on your own to see how this works. So you're going to create and check out a new branch called Bergfix in your project directory. And then you're going to modify the contents of your readme file, commit your changes, check out to master branch, merge Bergfix into master, and then push your project to remote server. In order to learn more about um, Git, you could always use the reference link here. And also you could download the cheat sheets we have. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. Just in case you have any questions or concerns, you could always reach out to us at hbc-team at nmsu.edu. Thank you.